Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And if you're thinking this is not usually the way my videos start off, I mean, well, this is the way my videos usually start off. But if you're thinking to yourself, this is not the viewpoint you usually have for my videos, you're not wrong. You see, today I am assembling the Cassidy game table. I arrived today. We'll explain more as I go. We'll talk. I'll explain. Think of it as an unboxing, except it's going to be a, a undeconstructing. An undeconstructing, I like that, otherwise known as building. This is going to be a building the Cassidy game table video. Uh, we'll talk more about exactly a little more context and whatnot. We'll go through that. Hopefully this is not the weirdest video you've ever seen on the channel. Then again, I've sung on camera before, so we should be good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. You're just going to be uh, watching me put together a table. We'll see. Start from finish. We have our instructions. That's going to be this little one-sided sheet of paper, which looks pretty clear. We'll, we'll see how clear it is or isn't as we get started. So, I'm going to grab all my supplies, all my tools, I have some tools of my own just in case, as well as their own tools, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. So, that's basically it. To begin with, it looks like we need, nope, not this, it looks like we need this one over here. So, let's give you some context here as to what's going on. My mic's over here, hopefully it's picking everything up properly. This looks like it needs to be screwed in, like so. Wait a second, there's two? Okay, there's two of them, perfect. Cool. So. The Cassidy game table. Uh, effectively, game theory tables, they've done, I believe it was the Origins game table, I could be mistaken. Uh, it's a game table that was going around with a lot of content creators. The, uh, I can't remember who had it. I know Ant Lab had it. Uh, I know Quacklope had one. I don't remember everyone who's had. It's a little uh, greasy, which is normal for, for screws. But effectively, the, the, the Origins game table went around, made the rounds of content creators, and then they had a Kickstarter for it. And apparently, they don't just have the Origins, they also have the Cassidy, which is a smaller table, and they reached out to have me review the table. So to begin with, this is not the review video. This is going to be a undeconstructing video. I like it. I really like that term. It's a cute term. Uh, undeconstructing video, where I'm going to go ahead and just build it and see how easy it is or isn't. So I have, just full disclaimer, I have pulled this out. I have gotten rid of all the cardboard boxes. That's just a mess. And then I did read the instructions to make sure I had all the tools necessary. So I'm not going in completely blind. I have read the instructions, I've glanced at them, but that's as far as I've gotten. I figured I want to see just how difficult it was to put together, and also how long it took. Although the longness will also be uh, factored in by the fact that I am talking to you the whole time. So, this is basically a five-step instructions. Step one is what I'm doing here, installing these into each of the four legs. Uh, from there we're going to go ahead and put this thing over here. Oh, coffee. Gotta make sure not to knock that over. Then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, the cross thingy. We'll, we'll show you a piece of wood shortly. That's going to be three, one more of these, and then from there, four. So, Cassidy Game Tables. Once again, Cassidy Game Tables, no, Origins uh, Game Theory Tables, uh, reached out. Uh, they wanted me to review the Cassidy Game Table. I took a look at it. I said, I asked a few questions. I wanted to make sure it looked like it had the basic functionality I would look for in a table. Uh, my biggest concern off the bat, we'll get to this in the review. I haven't used this at all. My biggest concern is going to be the lid may not leave as much room as I ideally want in a game table to like have miniatures games. Like it looks like you can have a game set up, but not necessarily a miniatures game set up. So either way, we'll go through that in the review process. I'll talk about that. Right now, this is just the typical uh, undeconstructing video where I just go over my thoughts. And this one, this one's not rotating in nicely. Let's see if I reverse the direction. Just for context, reversing the direction shouldn't matter at all, but sometimes you can get a better grip on your screws. Okay, so this one's stuck a little bit. Let's see. Let's see, that one may require, may require going through step two. Okay. Cool, let's see over here. If I grab this like so. Mm. Sometimes you have to get past an initial hump, so to speak. It, just, it means that the threads are a little tighter. Uh, some people watching this will be like, you're killing the threads on the other end by, by doing it that way. Could be. But it does look like it's got to pass that way. So that was perfect. Excellent. But yeah, so the Origins, the Cassidy game table, from the Origins, from, um, from game theory tables, the Origins is the other table. And now we can do, now my coffee needs to lose its stand because we're going to be putting this in there. But the, so the first problem is, like I said already, the, the height. It's not a problem, so to speak. It's more of a general concern. But I looked into it, like I said, I looked into the, the general table to make sure it's one that I think would fit what I'm looking for in a game table. Uh, the second part is going to be it's not what I'm looking for in a game table at all because of the size and my current space, so to speak. But that's not a critique of the game table. It's a critique of what I'm looking for. So that's going to go in like that, and then this is like this. So what we need to do is this over here is going to go in on each side. If I can line that up. Keep in mind, I will say this. 
any game table you ever build will be easier to build if you're not trying to do it on camera. So however long it takes me to do this, uh, I shave off 10-15%, and if I mess up a step, well, we'll get to it, but if I mess up a step, then you might be less likely to mess it up if you're not trying to talk to someone at the same time. That is going to be number one in there. We are going to use our things to tighten that, but what I want to do is I want to get a counterbalance in first so that this is nicely supported. Okay, excellent. Beautiful. Now we need to get that on there. So yeah, so like I said already, this is not a gaming table for me in terms of the space I'm looking for. I have right now, I currently have two game tables, and I plan on getting a third. We'll get to that. But this one doesn't fit that third that I need. So what's happening with this one is I'm going to, well, construct it. Then I'm going to, I need to adjust a bit. So I'm going to construct it first. Then after I'm done constructing it, I will review it. Let's put this over here. Uh, they actually have another nut wrench, but I like this one better. This one's, you're, these are definitely stronger than everything they can give. Yeah, so I'm going to review it. And then from there, it's going to be on a longer term loan to uh, Shira, who doesn't have a game table. So Shira, you know Shira from the channel. She's going to borrow this for her apartment, and she's going to use this for however long she wants to. And we'll go from there. Uh, it's going to still be mine, because I do plan on moving one day, and I could see myself wanting this back. So I absolutely do want to ma maintain ownership, so to speak. But that's what's going on there. My other two gaming tables, one of them is going to be a full dining table. I have a full dining room upstairs. We use that full dining room. I anticipate continuing to use that table. We like it a lot. That will be from from Uniquely Geek. So we picked that one out, we bought that one. Then we have another coffee table. In fact, the camera is resting on the other coffee table. But we have another coffee table, which is what I use for my filming setup. I don't game in it as much as I thought I would. Uh, people have commented on this in the past, but the I gamed in it more before I got another filming table down here. But now that I have another filming down table down here, I just kind of use that instead. I do occasionally game. I save the the uniquely coffee table, I save that for when I have like a legacy setup that I want to like be on top of. But past the legacy aspect where I can just cover it and then go back to filming, I don't really use it as much. Uh, then a third gaming table is I plan on getting a table, and I'll, I will be talking about that one at a later point, but I plan on getting a table to replace the current filming table I have, because my current filming table is basically an IKEA gate leg Norden table. I like it, it's great but it doesn't have the typical covered surface that you'd want in a gaming table. So to that end, it it's good, it does the job, but I want to get an actual gaming table to replace my filming area. I'll probably still have the cloth blanket on top, but this way I can go back and forth and play other games, have, you know, one game set up underneath, stuff like that. So why do I have this table? Well, because they wanted me to review it, and I was happy to review it. So to that end, this one, this one is also going to serve the same function of being both a dining table as well as a game table. And we'll, we'll, we'll see it all. You can kind of see the, the blue fabric behind me. We'll go through all that. But it has that dual function aspect as well. Uh, you know, you can cover it, have a game table set up. Again, for myself, we have a larger dining room table that we use like a full-on deluxe dining room table. So we don't need it as a dining room table, but I certainly want it as a cover table. So depending on what your space looks like, especially if in a smaller you know, either apartment or you like to double up your dining room for, that one's a little stuck, let's see if I can get this in, if you like to double up your, uh, that one's gonna go, there we go, perfect, yeah, so if you like to double up your dining room as a larger space and you want a larger, a smaller table, uh, this one will, I, I don't know how many will fit properly, again, I plan on keeping this down here, uh, gaming around it, which means for the next week or two, my couch area might be different because we're kind of hosting two gaming tables down here. Uh, then from there, once I'm done playing and re once I'm done using it, playing it, thinking about it and all that stuff, then I will go to the review, and then from there it goes to Shira. So, that's going to be that over there. That's locked in there. That's locked in there. Excellent. Perfect. One more to go. So, this is the Cassidy game table. Now, again, I am excited about this table. The idea of a smaller... One of the problems I have with my other game tables is they function very well for certain types of situations and or games but they are larger. And I actually really like the idea of having a smaller game table where you can all sit around it in a circle. I don't really have that set up. Again, pros and cons, you know, smaller game tables means that when you're trying to set up your gigantic, over-the-top, ridiculous game, you might have a harder time doing so. That's what makes sense. That's what happens with these, with these kinds of table situations. But the rest of the time, you know, if you want a smaller game, like for instance, my friend's house, uh, we have a friend that we go to for, for gaming that he has a smaller table. And sometimes my larger dining room table with all the game stuff, accessories and all that is a better fit. 
other times, his smaller table does the job because you can kind of fit another person around it without reaching too far. It kind of just works because of the size aspect. So the idea of having a smaller table available to me is, well, appealing. But again, that just comes down to having space. Ideally, right now, like I don't actually have a dedicated uh, gaming room. I have, I mean, if you're looking at all the games around here, I certainly have games in a room, but this is my basement. It's not where we play, where we play games, because I have a film setup, I have my other film setup, basically the couch and the other area, and then I have walking areas for people to actually, you know, bypass into the laundry room and all that. Okay, so, hopefully we've done this correctly. That was step one and two, which brings us to step three. We have attach the bottom plate. That's going to be this. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. This part I don't like at all, honestly, because this part, so I'm supposed to put it like this and then just screw it in. Oh boy, I do not like that one bit. So, I may or may not cut on this one. I'll try not to, but uh, there's a small chance I'll cut just because... Do I have a drill? No. Whatever, we're just going to make the best of it. So we put this here, we go ahead, we're just going to go ahead and screw stuff in. So, screwdriver time. Uh, basically, this is meant to just screw directly into the wood, which is good and bad. Uh, it means that it'll have a nice, firm placement, but it also means that... Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's one. Oh, you know what? This looks quick enough. I'll just do it this way. But this is giving a nice grip to hold everything together, uh, but it's just going to be a whole bunch of screws. Let's see. Okay, another one over there. And just straight into the wood. So at this point, you're drilling straight into the wood or whatever wood material this is. Is it straight up wood? It doesn't look the bottom of this. It looks like it's a... I don't know the wood composite types of names and stuff, but it looks like some sort of wood composite. Okay, that's another one. I may or may not. Will this go upstairs like this? You know what? I'm going to have to check this. I may not bother screwing in every single screw right now. I'm going to do just enough to give it traction, and I'll deal with the rest later probably. Let's see. Or I may just try to feed. Because again, this is going, this is being disassembled, uh, partially disassembled. Ideally, I would like to be able to keep the table in the situation it is now, where it's kind of, you know, just the legs like this, and then transport out the door that way. I think it'll work, but ultimately it does depend on the stairs. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it in a second, so you're gonna get a good feel for just how maneuverable this is up a standard basement stairwell. Okay, that's that. And then, again, you should ideally do all these screws. I'm not going to bother right now, at least not until I'm sure that I don't need to just unscrew them. So, we're going to grab that, we're going to grab that. My head is probably out of shot now, that's okay. I'm going to put the top over here, and then we're going to see if this... Whoa, that's heavy. That is heavy. Okay. Let's see, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead, give me one second, I'm just going to grab a tape measure, because that seems simpler than trying to finagle this. Okay, tape measure on this is going to be 37 inches. My stairwell, my stairwell is definitely not 37 inches. Oh boy. Okay. Angle to angle. Can I rotate it? This is probably not going to fit upstairs in the current form. I'm going to have to disassemble that and put at least two legs, which means I'm not going to go the secure way of screwing everything because this is going to have to come apart. So there goes that plan. Let's put the screws back in the bag. We will figure this out later. Again, this is not a table's fault, so to speak. This is, you know, the nature of me assembling a table that I plan on disassembling in a week. That said, we can go ahead now and flip this completely unsafely because we haven't done the full job we're supposed to with those screws. Now, again, I don't know what material this stuff is, but it is heavy. This this is heavy. This looks like straight up 2x4s. It's not 2x4s. It's something. Where's my coffee? Coffee. Anyways, next step. That was step three. Step three that I cheated a bit. I kind of skipped some stuff. Step four is going to be this board over here, which has... Is there a direction? Let's see. Is there an obvious direction? Not that I can see. That's going to go like so. I can't think of reasons why it would be one way or the other. We're going to go ahead and place this down. And then this is going to have to go... Huh. Sorry, this is the aspect where I need to try to figure out how this fits. 
Oh, interesting. Interesting. So there's enough holes, it looks like, to have you covered, whether regardless of which way you want to rotate it, which is interesting. There's also a hole over here. It's just a kind of slot there that I don't know if it's necessary. Let's take a look. Maybe it's supposed to fit something in the back here. I don't know. Anyways, that is neither here nor there. We're going to go ahead and put this on in a square shape because that's what it seems to show me over there. So like so. We got the holes lined up. Excellent. And I guess, by the way, in hindsight, it does seem like it should probably go this way because there's the more grooves and indentations in the setup over there. But we're going to go ahead and grab some tools. Table, board to table. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. That is very intriguing. But it also leaves me completely not confident as to how this works. So we have things in the corner over here. The corner is going to be how we connect that to that, which is fine. And that needs to be B and C. Eight sets. Okay, this is mounting board to table. Mounting board to table, and this is mounting board to column. So, we're going to do this. Uh, that's one thing with the assembly instructions. While I would say they are pretty quick and pretty streamlined, the one thing that's annoying is they have, like, they talk about bags like A, B, C, D, like you'd imagine, but then they actually just uh, put text in the bags. It's pretty easy to figure out, but it is worth noting. So, we have that, which means we need this. Okay. There should be eight of these bolts over here. We're going to dump one over there and then put this down like so. Okay. Then we're going to do another one like there. Down like so. Once you have two cross hatches, you do have a better chance of being able to line it all up. You kind of want to be wary of lining up. You want to be wary of screwing these all in before you have that. Now again, I do have this weird hole over here. I'm assuming that's a mistake. I don't know for sure. It shouldn't be a problem at all because, I mean, the structural integrity of this thing will be totally fine with eight bolts just as much as it would be with uh, seven. But that said, worth noting, something's a little off there. Okay, let's see, we got that there, we got that there. Putting these bolts one at a time, making sure we got a little bit of a connection at each point. And then we have extra, whatever these are called. They're called, um, I should know the names of these, extra washers, that's what they're called. Okay, so we got that over there, like so. And then we're just going to start screwing them all in. So this is going to go like this. Obviously, if you, have, if you have a drill, then anything to do with any of the screwing parts would go a lot faster. But anyways, so going back to this table. So, uh, reviewing the table. Uh, full disclaimer, by the way, there will be a link. I don't know if they'll be in this video yet. I, I guess there probably will be. There'll be a link to the table. Uh, feel free to wait for my review before you buy anything. Uh, but effectively, I will be getting a commission when this unit is sold. Whenever, whenever someone buys a table through my link, I will be getting a commission on that. I will try to be as critical as possible in my review. Be very, like, to be very clear, like, it's, it's interesting. I debated not taking a commission on the table. I debated saying, you know what, happy to review it, but don't need a commission. Uh, but that said, I don't mind. My issue always is, it's not, my issue isn't the bias. We've talked about this before in other things. My issue is that the perception of bias. People don't like it when you take money for stuff, and that's reasonable. My review of it, when I sit there and say to you, the Cassidy game table is the greatest table you've ever seen before in your life. It is God's gift to men. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, if I'm getting paid every time you buy it, that kind of biases me, right? And so the way I would like to approach that, at least with this, because I'm going to commission every sale, is going to be, I'm going to be as critical as I possibly can be about all the reasons it's not a table for you. But that said, I'm also going to be fair. I'm not going to try to just make stuff up. I'm going to tell you the comparisons. The good news is I've, I have my other game table. I have the Uniquely Geek game table, which I do like and do enjoy. I will give you as much critical feedback I can on the table. Understand that it will be coming with the, the aspect, the mindset that uh, I'll be using it for a few weeks. I will not be using it for, you know, months and months and months before telling you whatever. So, in terms of longevity, I won't be able to tell you anything like that. I can tell you that I know Quackalope still has his Origins game table, and it seems to be holding up just fine. Uh, I haven't spoken to many other content creators about their Origins game table. But the company itself seems to be... Uh, the company itself knows tables. I mean, they, 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 they have been dealing with tables for a long time. This is not their first rodeo. And so, I'm not worried about the longevity in that sense. I'm just more worried about the functionality as a game table. So, we're going to go through all that. But anyway, yeah, so that's the full disclaimer stuff. I guess I'll throw a tag in this video. I'll throw a tag in this video saying, you know, sponsored video or whatever it is. I haven't actually felt the need to do that yet because I guess technically I did a sponsored video once with Endless Winter and the Pledge Manager walkthrough. 
I think that's the only time, not I think, that is the only time I've taken money for anything, and I've never been commission-based either. Uh, this will be, well, I'm not getting money, but I am getting a free table, and I will be getting a commission when you buy it. So factor that into any decision you make, both when watching me put this together, as well as when I give you the uh, general review and feedback of the table. But anyways, that's going to be all that. What else is there? So I'll be doing a review in that sense. And yeah, game tables. I mean, I'm a huge fan of game tables in general. Fortunately, you know that already. I have multiple videos talking about and trying to sell you on the pros of game tables, why I like them, what the benefit is. I never got around to doing a full video on my upstairs table, primarily because all my camera stuff is set up down here. And upstairs, because I have four kids and we've been at home doing COVID for a year, upstairs is basically always a mess. And I don't like the idea of like, just the messiness of everything. So I'd want it to be a nice clean, it's not like this room is tidy, but there's tidy and there's tidy, if you know what I mean. So that is gonna be the situation with uh, that. But yeah, so I'll do a, at some point I'll try to cover my, my upstairs uniquely game, game table. I do like that one a lot, I've been using it for a year. Keep in mind, that one is like three times the price of this one, so you're gonna factor that in. We'll factor in all these things. There's all kinds of options for game tables out there. There's quality, there's budget quality, there's small, there's big, there's there's all these different companies. Obviously there's, what's that big $8 million one that they ran? Hmm, uh, Wormwood. Wormwood had their uh, modular table they covered this past year. There have been a whole bunch of Kickstarters, including the, the Origins, the Game Theory table. Okay, that is step four done. On to step five. Then you can sit there and say, hey, I watched Alex put together a table for half an hour. You know what? You watched me unbag plastic cubes for 25 minutes, so look who's talking. Anyways, that is step that, which means now it's time to move this. Let's move these off to the side over here. We've got some extra things because, well, extra washers and that one extra screw. We will move this up here like so, this up there, all the various components moved off the side. Okay, and then this into the middle. My wife's gonna kill me by the way. Rena is gonna straight up kill me because this is her pathway to get into the back room. She is gonna murder me. Okay, uh, maybe I should adjust the height of the camera. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna come over here and adjust the height of the camera now that we are ready. How's it going? Let's go ahead and move that up a bit. Okay, let's just wanna get my head in the shot. There we go. Well, you know what? Let's go up like this. Yeah, ignore that stuff there. Okay, cool. Anyways, you gotcha. So this can go up here like so. This can go over there. And this is gonna go on there and then I'm gonna have to like screw it in from the bottom. So I just raised the camera, but I have to screw it in from the bottom. So that was my bad. We'll move this. Ugh. And then this can go on top. There are going to be four holes over there, six holes. Oh, wow. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes corresponding to the edges over there. The good, it's got, I did it the right side. That would be really sad if I didn't do the right side. Probably should be doing this with another person here, but hey, let's live a little. The bad news is this isn't a live stream. So if something goes horrifically wrong, it's not like you can call someone because if this video goes up, then it means something didn't go horrifically wrong. So let's go ahead and try to get this on here this is probably a bad idea. So, we're going to do the following. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, that could have been worse. Let's see. Excellent. Okay. We got that one side, that side. And then this needs to come around over here. And... Okay. So it's kind of just resting a bit off the edge. There we go. Okay, basically there's two brackets in it. And the two brackets basically set where the table's going. It looks like I got nicely lined up in the brackets, which means we have our table. Um, I'll go ahead and screw one or two of these in, because why not? And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the actual table surface. Okay, like so. We got our little handy dandy thingy. And let's go ahead and get this in. Okay, hey, so I'm still here. A little bit trying to just make this all, there we go. Okay, so anyways, this is the table. We got our cup holders, we'll take out some plastic. We will get the whole situation set up and I'll show you the cover as well before we call it a day. 
it's just a building. So I'm gonna have to get, I'm not gonna do all these screws because the level of interesting conversation I can have from underneath a table is further inhibited. Uh, but you can see over here. So you can see to begin with, you see this gap over here? This is the table surface. This is almost more of a, like, it's a shallow surface. It's great for card games, great for whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll test the, the gap in the review itself. I'm not gonna test it now. I'll put the cover on, but I'm not gonna test the, the gap. So this goes over here on this side into there and yeah again the mic is going to be over there just out of shot of the camera so i'll be a drop muffled whenever my head dips beneath the table okay we got a firm grip over there so it's going to go in it's interesting i think i pushed it up a bit i think okay that's going to be that like so and boom okay so i got six more of those to do but i'm not going to do them i will go ahead and take these out because i want the nice cup holders okay um i'll leave the bag there so again i'm curious what the clearance is on that cover the cover serves two purposes a cover in any game table effectively serves two purposes. The first purpose is to convert your game table to a dining room table, because if you have a cover, oh, interesting. I should just push stuff on the bottom and try to uh, get them up. But yeah, the first is gonna be turning your game table into a dining room table, which is what we'll do. The second is going to be preserving your game that you're currently in the middle of. So rest assured, before I do a review, I will have a better idea of just how well it can preserve a game. That's going to be my biggest concern offhand. And for context, like that's something I told them. Like I told them, I said, hey, just as a heads up, I want to make sure that this can actually preserve a game as well. Because otherwise, otherwise it's, it's, it's decent, but that would be a, my major critique. If it can't. And then we have this over here. Now this, by the way, is the second thing that I would say I'm not a huge fan of. While getting this part to the top over here was not a big deal because it's a one-time thing. Uh, this is not small. This is a single piece of bigness over here that it is obviously doable to get this on, as you just saw, but it's less functional. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that is good. Oh, and there are grips by the side that I didn't see. So this is your game table all set up. What The part that I'm saying, oh, that's nice, is I didn't realize, I thought this would rest completely over the edge, leaving you no space. So this is good and bad. So if you can see over here, this is a pre-review. The good part is this rests on top. So that means you're actually gonna get a decent amount of clearance here, more than I thought. You'll probably get like that much clearance. I thought you're getting like no clearance. I thought this was good for like a castle of burgundy, but not, you know, anything that had miniatures. Now miniatures, miniatures are still gonna be pushing it. We'll test, I'll test it with miniatures I don't care about because I might crush them otherwise. But the bad part, so that's the good part. The bad part is this does have a tiny bit of shift to it. I wonder if there's a way to minimize that. Because again, for myself, I can't think I'd mind for the purpose I'm looking for with this table, but for others, I can imagine that being a sticking point if you're by your beautiful dining room table and things are shifting back and forth. So yeah, we'll figure stuff out from there. We'll touch base when I get to my review. And that has basically been it. That has been your, um, what would I call again? My undeconstructing video of the Cassidy game table. I will come back to you with more information when I actually have had a chance to sit up and play around this table and get things done in that sense. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This has been an unusual video, but either way, have a good one.